Live. Oh my god, I'm not ready. Uh, is, are we up yet? Is it our turn to ready? Yeah. Oh my god. And, is it the nineteenth? I meant to say oh. five four, but I was lost. Yeah. <laughs> right because, yeah. oh We've gosh. been doing this in January. I got lost. Almost got the timing down right. Almost, almost. Hello, okay. hello everybody. <laughs> It's a, it's it's a Arkansas week, and uh, and I always like Arkansas week. Why? Because it's my week. And, uh, <laughs> I look forward to that because uh, I do so love me, and uh, <laughs> uh, and, and I and I love Arkansas. I love all the Amok territories, but I love Arkansas the most. That's why I live here, right? Yeah. Anyhow, uh, uh -huh. hey, uh, I don't know. It's just one of those things. <laughs> wah, wah. Wah, Anyhow. Wah, wah. <laughs> Every A week that we've been doing uh, here recently, we've been talking to guests that are coming to the Arkansas Paranormal Expo in October. Guess what? That's just next month. I've got one more show besides this one. Is that my phone? Is that me dinging? Dave, can you hear me dinging? No. I'm dinging. We don't I hear, hear me dinging. dinging. It's driving that's me. Just you dinging. It's driving Somebody's going dingy crazy in my ear. So, hey, I'm doing a show. Now leave me alone. Anyhow. Uh, <laughs> good time. Hey, good time. Uh, but anyhow. Uh, if you if you've ever uh, been to the expo uh, or uh, in the one of the Bigfoot things around here, then maybe you've heard of this guy that we have on tonight, Robert Swain. He's a, he he makes me afraid to go out uh, camping. We've talked about this several times, and since the very first time I've seen him talk, uh, I was like, I'm never going to go outside again. Why? Right? Because he talks about Bigfoot, and 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 like I said, I've always had this fascination with Bigfoot, only because he has a fascination with me, and he wants to eat me. And <laughs> That's Robert knows because you've met but, him, and he said that he wants to eat you. I don't have to meet him; I just know things. You know, and it's so funny because there's so many people out there who who know things. They, they have their woo woo powers, and I have my the own woo woo, -woo powers. powers. I know, -woo -woo. I know. I know for a fact that all those creatures, all those crypto creatures, and Mothman included, they all want to eat me. Which is why I try to stay outside. And not outside. <laughs> trying to stay inside. Uh, you can see, just even talking about it, it's got to be weird. Is. Robert, are you yes. there? Are you with us? I'm here. I'm listening. You're, yeah, you're, 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 and, you're, and you're wondering, and you're wondering, why am I here? I was going to see how... How deep the hole was you were digging? <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty great because you know what happens is my mind is over here, and then and then Shauna goes, "Hey, we got ten seconds." I'm like, "Wait a minute, I need to get over here." And here I am. You need a flashlight? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> no. So I we met. When did we meet, Robert? First time? It's been it's been uh, uh, eight or nine years. Yeah, it's on thing. Close, yeah, close to ten like years that, ago. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, uh, it, and. And I remember you talking, you were, you gave your presentation, and I was just like, yeah, I, terrible. I never want to go outside. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, <laughs> but anyhow, you, you said something that was kind of interesting and kind of along the same lines as me, because uh, uh, I'm a Christian, and some people have a hard time dealing with the fact that I'm a Christian and I'm a ghost hunter. You yeah. also are a Christian. Uh, you, yes. You're a little. You're a step above me as uh, just a normal Christian. You you actually are a preacher man, right? Well, yeah, I do that. You're a preacher in the real man. World. So it's in the real in the really real world. Uh, yeah. So how do you reconcile Bigfoot with your Christian belief? Oh, it's not hard at all. Is it not? Uh, no, no. I don't believe that Bigfoot is a human. Uh, I would have a conflict there if I was if uh, if I thought it was a human. Uh, you know, Bigfoot is big and it's hairy. It eats raw meat. It can see in the dark. It lives in the woods. It poops in the woods. Uh, it's an animal. Yeah. And I I see this as a big hairy animal that has not been discovered yet. And uh, if if it's out there and if it's a living animal, God made it, and we'll just have to deal with that. So there you go. So there you go. So so Tina has this question. She said Tina wanted me to ask this question. She said, where where ask Robert, where did Bigfoot live? Live? Yeah. Well, he he lives in the woods. Oh. Oh. <laughs> um he lives all over Arkansas. You can tell her that. Um she uh um Mikhail's trying to whisper something to me and I can't hear her. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, she said he or she. I'm going to refer to Bigfoot as a male just because it's going to be easier to do that. Uh, but if it is a living being, uh, it probably has a breeding population of male and females. And um, there's been lots of sightings of uh, family groups with you know, juveniles. So um, I, I think it's an animal. It lives deep in the woods and it's nocturnal. And guess what? We don't go in the deep woods when it's dark. Yeah, and, I don't uh, go in the deep woods when it's light. <laughs> even, even, even deer hunters, you know, uh, they're not going to go 10 or 15 miles from the road up in the hills to kill a deer and then have to drag it out. You know, they're even they're pretty close to uh, transportation, uh, even if they've got a four wheeler. Uh, so there's lots of places in Arkansas where uh, people don't go. You know, there's just uh, Arkansas has nine, 19 million acres of uninhabited forest land that's amazing that's when you think about that 19 yeah. million and that doesn't include uh farmlands that no that does they don't have anybody living on yeah you know? so there's lots of habitat out there uh for them to live in you know you go into old houses looking for things uh there's been a lot of reports of bigfoot using abandoned barns and abandoned abandoned houses to live in uh uh, Those are your upscale Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. Or okay, the, luck, the lucky ones. There's the ones honestly, jobs. there's there's very few uh, sightings uh, and reports of them living in caves. I'm sure they do occasionally, but you would think that um, a troglodyte, you know, uh, something like that, would live in caves all the time. But uh, uh, I think a lot of times they're just out under underneath an overhang of a, a cliff or uh up in some trees or something like that uh, or in adrian's backyard uh, yeah, I'm, i don't go out there when it's dark either just, to, just i stay within the light uh but i have i have five ferocious chihuahuas that'll fend off uh, all that hey that, probably kicked off you tore down that's the, snack the building. food for bigfoot <laughs> I'm, I'm snack food for bigfoot what are you talking about no uh uh you said something you're going to refer to uh, Bigfoot as a he, but like the only film that I've ever seen that was, to me, convincing was the Patterson film, which is yeah, obviously not a male. You're right. You're right. It's, they call it Patty because Roger Patterson, uh, and the, it's just a nickname, Patty. And uh, um, she was about seven and a half feet tall and she was walking away. She has a, a herniated uh, muscle on one of her legs. When you watch it really close, you can see it bulge out when she walks. Yeah. And uh, you can see the muscles ripple underneath the, the skin. So this is not a man in a suit. Uh, this is a, a flesh and blood being. And Oh, yeah. She's, I mean, she's in the film. She's very unhappy that she's been seen. Uh, she's trying exactly. to get away. Uh, but yeah, there. in fact, the reason why Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin, the, the two cowboys that filmed that, um, uh, reason why they didn't, fo didn't follow her on horseback was because uh, just a few weeks earlier, uh, footprints that matched the ones that she left were there. But there was also large 18-inch footprints, like yeah. a big male. Oh, so no. it, and, so uh, she was the big one. Nope. No, no, she was a female, but the big one was was much bigger, like like a lot of animals are. The males are are bigger, uh, oh. and uh, that's the reason why they didn't go out in the woods chasing her because they were afraid they were going to run into the big male. You know, I never heard that. Well, I, I, that I, that's that new. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I've learned something. Good night, everybody. No. <laughs> I, I, I heard no. that. I no. heard that directly from Bob Gimlin. He wow. wrote the foreword for my Laugh Squatch book that I had out, and nice. um, and uh, I got to talk with him some, and uh, that he told me that story uh, himself. So he's That's in his really mid eighties cool. now and lives in Yakima, mm -hmm. Washington. So, mm -hmm. Man, but he's still holding to the holding that what he saw was real. I oh, well, but see, uh, yeah. And, I, I, I find myself like really skeptic a lot of times I, and I poke a lot of fun at things, but that there, 
and, but I, I look at films and I see there's a lot of things that have been produced and put out there. I'm like, ah, it could be this, could be that. Most things are like, uh, like just quick flashes. Like I saw one that was supposed to be from a raft and they saw it just real quickly. And it, most things yeah. are like flashes where this one wasn't, it was there. And I'm like, and being the time frame that it was, I don't think special effects had gotten up to that effect, uh, that good yet. And, oh, yeah. uh, and that, uh, and these guys weren't special effects artists. So oh, how, no, how, no, they, they, how could they beat Hollywood? Uh, exactly. To exactly. do that. So they, I, I, I they believe took that. The film, they took the film to Disney. Disney said that we can't do this. They took it to the man that did the apes in 2001, a space odyssey, the movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, this is remarkable. You know, yeah. this, is, this is something that's really, really neat. And uh, <coughs> you can see the muscles move underneath that suit. But in 1967, spandex had not even been invented yet. <laughs> that that skin tight costumes that we have now, we, we think of the technology we have now and we look at Patty and we say, well, that could be done, but it couldn't be done in 67. No, and 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 as I say, it obviously female, and that's just something that they would have done. I would no, I don't think anybody would have thought to do that in this. I'm I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a film and just mess with people. I didn't think they. Oh well, let's do this, and I, and it just one thing. One thing that I found out uh, early on is if if there is if it's a legitimate film, the last place in the world that you would want to put a film that you made is on YouTube. Uh -huh. yeah. there's so many hoaxes so many crazies that are out there <laughs> you know you would go to a reputable research group that has go a, to a rep scientist and, and has a, a, a protocol on yeah. what to do with when they find a body or, or what or evidence things mm -hmm. like that uh so if i see something on youtube and it's and that's where it originated more than likely it, it's not the real deal yeah. Yeah. still to me the best uh the best single paranormal anything in history to me uh yeah. and i and i'm not an overall huge bigfoot believer anyways so but uh, that i can't i i have to yeah. and then you take my experience into account so just because well, just not everybody's seen the, something doesn't necessarily look, mean that it isn't there look at the circumstantial evidence though for for a bigfoot you have the photographs you have scat samples. You know what scat is, right? Yeah. It's poop in the woods. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they yeah. they they find gigantic piles of this poop that's that's bigger than a, a bear would make, and it's bigger than a human would make. Well, what made it? You know, they find hair samples uh, at uh, places uh, where there's been sightings. Uh, there's footprints and there's handprints, and I have somewhere I don't. I should have got it out. I have a great big butt print where it's a sit butt print. Down. <laughs> somebody sat down. Uh, That's a uh, great <laughs> in Washington, and this guy made this. And uh, and Dr. Jeff Meldrum, I got it from him, and he was really excited about this butt print because, uh, <laughs> like a human, even Adrian probably has fatty cheeks on his hiney. No you know, man, you know, he no, just, no. He just has pure that. muscle, man. Just pure muscle. What, Tons of steel. Whatever, <laughs> well, whatever sat down here had no fat on its rear end at all. There yeah, was no wow. fat at all, and uh, you can even see the hair, uh, hair on the the back of the legs that was That's crazy. pressed in the oh. mud. And, and that so was in Washington. Was really, mm -hmm. Yeah, that was in Washington. I, I and I have hand prints. I have an ankle print. I have a, tons of footprints. Uh, I have a couple of footprints I was going to show you. I should have I should have grabbed mine because yeah. Tina bought one. And she had. To oh have yeah, it. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. I got a good one. Yeah, but I'm waiting for that one that falls down and plants his face in the in the dirt. You know, uh -huh. so I can have that. Uh -huh. Yeah, if, and if I keep getting these, sooner or later I can put them all together and have a whole body of a big <laughs> wow. foot. You know? Yeah. You know, you yeah, brought up a whole fun. bunch of different. You know, anatomy parts that people have found and hair and all that not the parts but you know the uh, sure the, impression the, the impressions yeah. um why don't we ever hear about that stuff i've never heard about that oh i've yeah. only heard well, i've only heard about you need, to go, you need to go to bigfoot conferences uh and this is a shameless plug uh, i'm having the arkansas bigfoot conference uh on october 
the 14th, it's a Saturday, in Enola, Arkansas. And this will be our sixth Arkansas Bigfoot Conference. Uh, so uh, you go there and you talk to researchers and uh, they'll, they'll have things like this on display. And uh, so uh, you probably won't hear a lot of things like this on a ghost channel. Uh, but a, a Bigfoot website or a Bigfoot Facebook page, you'll hear about these these types of circumstantial evidence. Okay. Are there uh, uh, but, are, are there, are there differences in coloration? Um, oh yeah, of, of yeah. Bigfoot. It, does it depend on where they live, what they eat, uh, well, you know, the territory, it, the country? Well, I don't think uh, geographically it it matters. Uh, all of the stuff I'm talking about in Arkansas is coming from a database that I have of about 1,200 sightings just from Arkansas. And wow. I'm compiling these into a book, and uh, hopefully in a few months it'll be out. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the majority of the animals that are seen in Arkansas are either brown or reddish brown, like an Irish setter. Uh, and then there, there's black, and uh, surprisingly, there's about 30 uh reports of a white bigfoot now that may be age you know yeah people, like gray, uh, gray haired people turn gray like adrian you know when he gets old and uh, i pay so, a lot i pay a lot of money for this my hairdresser you know, does that. do you do you yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're one of the beautiful people <laughs> so, speaking speaking of uh, age though. but but yeah but, they, they see a white bigfoot as well and i don't think it's dietary uh i think it's just genetics you know okay. um Brown animals are going to produce brown children, you know, brown offspring, and yeah. and that in that way, there's some that have uh, 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 spots that it, be all black and it may have a, a, a big white spot on it. Uh, it's like a, some type of pigmentation problem. Hmm. Uh, so hmm. that, okay. that's pretty wild. That's kind of odd too. So. Interesting. What about uh, what about estimated you know lifespans or ages? Uh, any guesstimates on those well it's probably you know a, a gorilla in captivity will live longer than a gorilla in the wild uh, and okay. that's and that's usually the case with any animal and so it's estimated and this can only be an estimate because we just don't know right. uh, the, it's estimated that maybe 40 or, or or at the most 50 years in the wild would would be um uh, would be an older adult male or, or female. Uh, so uh, I don't know. Uh, it's an apex predator. An apex means there's nothing in the woods that's going to eat it, that's going to bring it down. And so most of these animals are going to die of disease or uh, accidents or, or illness. Uh, and if you have a dog uh, and it's really old and when it's coming to the end of its life, it may disappear. It may go off somewhere in the secluded place and die. Uh, and a lot of animals do that. And maybe these do that as well. Uh, maybe they bury their dead. You know, some chimpanzees have been reported in Africa where they will they'll take a corpse of from their tribe and uh, cover it with leaves like wow. they're burying the dead. Uh, maybe they eat their dead. Who knows? You know, uh, it could be uh, all Native Americans call these things cannibals. And that doesn't mean necessarily that they ate other Bigfoot, but they ate humans, yeah. you know, like Brother no Rat or Brother Bear or Brother Bigfoot. Adrian. And he's a cannibal. Yeah. And he's they used him kind of like as a boogeyman, told mm -hmm. his ch children, don't leave the village or the Bigfoot's going to get you and eat you. And there's a lot of Indian stories that have been passed down about uh, this female Bigfoot that has a big basket on her back and she grabs children and puts them in the basket and takes them back to her house to eat them. And so it's like a boogeyman. Uh, but I, uh, most of the Native American, I, I should say this, all of the Native American tribes in um, the United States have stories of these creatures. Yeah. All, mm. all tribes do. And most of them fear them they're they're things to avoid uh there you don't talk about these things and if you see one it's very bad luck i would and think so, it would be bad luck i would, I would yeah. personally but then well, I fear. 
Well, I thought it was good luck when I had my one and only sighting. So I was really excited about that. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a, but, so I may have thought what, it too. What, well, before you walk us through that, uh, you talk about the the creatures. We talked about lifespan and stuff like that. And I hear some people say it's uh, some kind of gorilla. Do you believe that, or it's a, it's, it's only... not a gorilla? It's not a gorilla. Because, I, no, I, their I've feet had, are different. I had one witness describe it as a gorilla with long legs. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because uh, not... gorillas have those short legs. Yeah. Um, it. I think it's a primate. It's a higher primate, uh, like the chimpanzee and orangutan, or a gorilla. You know, an orangutan. Uh, there was one orangutan that was on an island, and he watched humans come over to the island in a boat. And uh, he learned how to get into the boat and paddle himself off the island just by, wow. just by watching. See ya. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, had a, I had an encounter, uh, I think it was 2018, uh, where I was, it was uh, after a, an, an expedition and only two of us were left. And it was in November and it was cold and it was rainy and it was real foggy. And uh, I was just sleeping in my car. And I was uh, just uh, put the seat back uh, and I was behind the wheel and uh, I have a camera with me. I put it on the dash. I have my pistol with me and I set it on the dash and I always lock my doors. And uh, I woke up in the middle of the night and my car was rocking back and forth like this. And, uh, you know, when you, you wake oh, up man. and you're, you're saying, what's what's going on about that time? I heard the handle on the passenger door pull up and then drop back into place uh no uh and oh. then and then <laughs> I, I i reached for my gun it was the only time i'd ever reached for a firearm uh researching out of 17 years now and uh when i when i moved inside it ran away you could hear it run away in the rain and wow. uh, i was so glad i had my doors locked yeah uh, but it, it probably had watched people and it knew if I move that, that door will open and there's probably cookies inside that, oh, that yeah. vehicle, you know, you taste uh, cookies. Oh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I uh, woke up the next morning and of course it, it was rocky and it, I didn't find any footprints, but my, my passenger uh, rear do uh, window on the door was pushed in all the way. Oh, wow. uh, like something, something was there. Mm. Uh, and it, it ran away. It's pretty scary. It's, and that was about, that was about a quarter mile from where I had my siding a couple of years later. Uh, so, uh, they, they watch us, uh, uh, they probably know how to turn a doorknob, uh, on a house, uh, and things like that. That's they, why Tina locks the door. She, mm -hmm. yeah. And they, <laughs> and they probably know that when that big, big, thing with the round wheels goes away there's nobody home and they can come around uh they they they're smart enough to do things like that like a an orangutan or a chimp would you know if a, okay. chi a chimp could ride a bicycle probably, or a tricycle i'm, I'm thinking know, they're probably things. a little smarter than that if they, well they, they may be we don't know you know there's so much of this that we don't know it's all speculation in theory now uh, so you didn't see anything when it was uh messing with your truck no, then uh, I, I did not. Uh, my the inside of my glass was fogged up, and it was it was foggy outside in the rain. I just knew that something was rocking my car, and then I heard that door door handle fall back into place. That's scary. And, uh, oh my gosh! But you said that was like a year before you actually had a sighting. Yeah, yeah, wow. and it was cool. it was there in in eastern oklahoma actually adrian it's really probably not far from where you live oh i'm so, sure uh, probably right down the street good <laughs> <Lord>. <laughs> and uh, yeah i it was in broad daylight and i was had turned off of the paved road onto a gravel road that wound down to where there was an encampment we had like three or four different encampments at that time uh of researchers and I turned and I was going to go down. I had left my my uh, um, chair, my lawn chair uh, at this place. And I was going to get it. Uh, and when I turned, I saw something on the side of the road. And it took one step and it took two steps. And it was in the trees on the other side of the road. 
and I I estimate it was about nine feet tall and it was hunched over and I couldn't see I couldn't see its arms. It it looked like it might have been carrying something. It kind of reminded me of uh, a linebacker carrying a football. You know, yeah. And uh-huh. I think it was trying to make itself look smaller. Maybe and, it was carrying uh, your oh, chair. Maybe so, yeah. I, I, I have a was... friend. I have a friend named Big Jim, and he's about he's about six five and weighs about four hundred pounds. And uh, I had him walk across uh, where I. I stopped my car. I had a GoPro on my debt, my dash that I didn't have set up. Uh, it's just my luck. And, and <laughs> instead of gunning it and getting as close as I possibly can, as soon as I saw it, I hit the brake. And, and so uh, where I stopped the car, I, we had Jim walk across where the creature was. And uh, it, that, it was then that I realized just how big this thing was. Because uh, Jim was bent over and he was half the size of this thing. And it took him about five or six steps to get across the road where this thing took two steps. Yeah. Big old long and, uh, stretch. Yeah. We started, we started looking around and Jim is a great tracker. I mean, he, he is native American uh, and uh, he was taught at an early age to track things. And we found a footprint and we cast the footprint uh, of my sighting. And this is the footprint. I don't know if you can see it or not. Wow. It's about 19 inches yeah. long and wow. it's, it's about eight inches wide at the toes. You can count the, count the toes. There's five toes there. Uh, but it's, it's a huge, it was a huge animal. And, uh, and Adrian, you were talking about me being a preacher. I, after I saw that, I didn't want to say anything to anybody oh. because Believe, the the you know, question is, you being a preacher, after, would say, well, say, did you say anything at the time? <laughs> well, no. In fact, when I came home, I told Mikhail, Mikhail, I can't say anything about this yeah. uh, because I'm a preacher. I can believe in things and uh. people laugh at you and pat you on the back and, uh. and that. But if I come back and tell people I saw something, that's a wholly, whole different air thing. Oh yeah, you oh, know yeah. they're they're either going to believe you or they're not going to believe you. And as a preacher, you know your credibility is paramount. Oh yeah, and so and so I told Mikhail we weren't going to tell anybody anything about this. And the very next weekend was the Paracon at the MacArthur Park Uh-oh. in Little Rock. Yeah, and I gave I gave my presentation, and I always have a question and answer. And I said, does anybody have any questions? A hand goes up. Uh, have you ever seen one of these things? <laughs> and then I'm, I'm a dilemma. Am, am I going to lie to this person or am I going to say yes? Yeah. And so I said, yes. Another hand goes up. He said, would you tell us about it? Yeah. And so I wound up spilling the beans the very next weekend <laughs> to this huge crowd of people. And what I didn't know is in the crowd was a, a a reporter for the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Oh, fun. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> when he wrote the article about the, the Paracon, he led off with my sighting. Nice. And talking about my sighting. So I went in one week from telling my wife, we're not going to say anything about this <laughs> to the whole state knowing about it. <laughs> That's, <right. laughs> That's awesome. Oh, so. my God. Just- <laughs> And God just sitting there on the phone going, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. You can't, like, you can't yeah, say okay. he doesn't have a sense of humor. <laughs> and, right. and I was really worried about that. And I went to church and I didn't say anything about it, but I had several people from church walk up to me and they, they looked at me and said, did you really see something? And I said, yes, I did. Yeah, and right. they said, okay. okay. <laughs> and that's no, no repercussions. No yeah. lash lashing out or anything like that. I was I was really humbled by that. So as they believe they say, as, as they say, remember, it's always best to tell the truth. Yeah, yeah I remember you're right. Bringing up, you're I right. remember bringing up what I do uh, uh, at church, and uh, and everybody's all oh no, they're trying to say go to blah blah uh-huh. blah. They're all in a group, but all each almost every single one of them came up to me a one-on-one you know i've had this experience i had this experience they all had a ghost experience but and yeah when they're with other eyes watching they're like oh no no such thing (laughs) Uh, fibbing one way isn't right even if you fib the other (laughs) everybody's afraid of it 
uh, Robert, I'm going like to I'm, I'm have to fess up to when you were telling your story about that uh, creature hunched over running across the road in a couple of steps and you you know said looked like it was carrying a football first thing that hit me was you went there to look for your chair was it oh. carrying your chair yeah <laughs> <laughs> hiding it from you <laughs> no that's funny I, when, did you find your chair when, <laughs> yes when i when i went okay. back to the camp when i went back i stopped where it had crossed and i got out and i looked around and then I got back into my car and drove down to the camp to get my chair. And when okay. I got out of the car, everybody says, what's wrong with you? What's, because the blood had just drained from my face. And, uh, oh. and uh, like I'd seen a ghost oh, or yeah. something. And uh, so. That's an amazing story, though. Out of 17 years, that's my one and only sighting. And I've, I've had other things happen. And I found footprints. And I've been really close to these things because you can they have uh when they're agitated and and or angry they'll put out a, a scent gland smell oh. and it's extremely rank it is it's like uh rotted meat and skunk oh. you know uh, mixed together in in the dead body it's just yeah. really really bad and, so we have uh, i have deterrent. something in common with bigfoot that's what you're telling me uh -huh. <laughs> it's a good deterrent uh -huh. yeah so i i know i've been around uh, close to one uh, my my first encounter was I was I had done a gospel meeting at Winnesota, Mississippi, and I was driving back on the Natchez Trace. Have you ever been on the Trace? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love that. I love that. It's just a, a tunnel of trees and you see deer and you see turkeys and all kinds of animals. And I I uh, I had eaten with the, the preacher there and I we visited and I, I was getting a late start going home and uh, it was already dark and i was driving down the road and uh, it was dark and it was in the fall and the wheat leaves were blowing across the road and i was listening to art bell on coast to coast on the radio <laughs> and uh, i drove up on there was nobody else there was no other cars there you know and uh, i drove up on a, a black labrador a young black labrador uh uh, about half grown and uh, i stopped because i i thought it was a roadkill uh and then i saw it move and i was like oh great somebody's hit this dog and it's still alive Aww. so what do i do do i take it to a vet or do i run over it and put it out of its misery <laughs> uh and and i and i started watching it and it never once acknowledged my car Aww. uh it I was always looking off the road uh, uh to to my left and uh, every once in a while, it would scoot back a couple of inches and it was snarling and it was barking and it would scoot back a little bit more and scoot back a little bit more. And it was deathly afraid of something that was in the dark by that road. And uh, uh, finally, it got about halfway across the road and it jumped up and turned around and it took off on the right side and uh, left me there all by myself. You know, uh, and yeah. uh, and so I. I couldn't see out my window because of the glare from the, the gauges on the dash. And so I rolled my window down. And as soon as I, I did, boom, there's that smell that just oh. my eyes started watering, almost a, a gagging reflex. So I hurriedly rolled it back up and I sat there and not knowing really what to do. And I was all by myself and Art Bell was telling this creepy thing about aliens. And, and, uh, I was there. So I, I was there about five minutes and I rolled the window back down and that smell was completely gone. Wow. Yeah, I'd have been completely it's, gone. It's, it's, wow. it's not like, it's not like there was a roadkill there and it was stinking. That's that smell was gone. Yeah. So I got out and I walked around a little bit and uh, looking and uh, I didn't see anything. So I got in the car and drove home, but um, that dog was scared for its life. Oh, and poor thing. So um, yeah, all I can think I, is cars do at least 95, you know, <laughs> 120. Well, you know, you can only drive like 45 or 50 on the Natchez trace. Yeah. All the way. So it depends on what's behind me. Well, our <laughs> overseas friend wants to know a little bit about the caves. Is it oh, usually caves? caves? Okay. Yeah, they're asking, is it usually caves where Bigfoot usually is? There have been sightings in Arkansas 
of things living in caves or they some one I, I remember they went into an old mine and they found a huge bird nest thing oh, wow. that was about eight foot across in this old mine and it it something had made a huge nest to sleep in in there wow. so uh, i i think they they may they're smart enough to to not get into a situation where there's no other exit out of that cave right you know mm -hmm. if there's only one exit you know you wouldn't want to be caught in there and not right. be able to get out uh i think uh, uh, who knows there may be skeletons in a cave somewhere uh but yeah. um uh, arkansas has lots of caves when i was mm -hmm. in college i was in a spelunking club and we would go uh, uh you, you know two two times a month at least uh and because we would drive around in the in the winter time and the caves air was con a constant 56 or 57 degrees and so there was be steam coming out of a cave wow. in the dead of winter and we could identify caves that way and so then we would go explore them but uh uh i, I think they use caves occasionally but i don't think they they do that all the time uh I think they're they're out in the woods, uh, under trees, uh, places like that, uh, under Adrian's house, things, <laughs> things like that. Probably oh, I hear noises every now and then. So do yeah. they? Do they build and a you, stick you just think it's you just think it's a ghost, and it's really a Bigfoot. Yeah. Well, there are some noxious smells every now and then. Oh, yeah. so so do they build like lean tos and? Yeah, the cuts and stuff. They well, no, not anything that elaborate. But we do find uh, tree structures. Now, trees fall over all the time. Limbs mm -hmm. uh, stack up on themselves naturally uh, because of storms and winds and stuff like that. But I have found things that I cannot explain. It is it is manufactured. It is made in a remote place. Uh, and it's not made how any sane human would make something. Uh, they they stack uh, limbs up, uh, about six foot limbs up, and, and made a teepee uh, looking structure. Okay. And one side of it was open. And uh, some people suspect, well, maybe that's a nursery thing. Maybe the, the mama builds that thing, puts its baby in there and sits at the opening and doesn't have to worry about the baby. Uh, all that time uh, or maybe it's some type of blind because the ones that I have found in the woods that way or seem to be always really near acorn trees oak trees and so if oh. deer are coming in to eat the acorns and something is hiding in there maybe it's an ambush uh, thing uh, okay. uh, limbs okay. broken off or, or trees that are twisted you can see this twisted and no other tree has any damage on it at all, except this one tree. Uh, maybe it's some type of marker there. We found rock stacks in the middle of the woods and you got to be careful with rock stacks because it may have been stacked 200 years ago yeah. and uh, rocks are going to stay there that way. Uh, but uh, maybe that's some, something uh, a Bigfoot does. Um some people think that maybe they stack the rocks up and rodents will come in and make their nests or snakes will make their nests in there. And then they'll come and take it apart and, and catch whatever is there. Uh, so maybe it's a food source for them. But there's, yeah, they, they do make things uh, in the woods. Uh, tree bows. I've seen trees where they were bent over and you see that a lot. But if you see a tree that's bent over and a log has been placed on the end that's touching the ground to hold it that way that didn't just happen that way yeah. somebody not, manipulated not, not naturally that. yeah yeah um, or, or a big rock and uh, i found those as well uh, maybe it's young bigfoot just playing around maybe it's a some type of territorial marker maybe i i, I we don't know uh, but we do know we find these things and they are constructed in the woods so Interesting. Oh, there's another. About, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ken. No, go ahead. Um, there's another question from our overseas friend over on Twitch asking if uh, Bigfoot can be a skinwalker. And remember that some animals don't see reality as we see it. A monkey that sees itself in a mirror is not self-aware that it is them that they are looking at. Well, I 
believe that Bigfoot is a flesh and blood creature that it is not supernatural. There are some people that are out there that claim that they come from a, another dimension into our dimension. And that's why they explain we can't catch it or, or it seems to disappear. Well, they're just really good at hiding in the woods and uh, uh, much better than we are. Uh, some people think they come from other dimensions. Some people think that they're half man, half ape. I don't believe that. I think God made man and God made animals and and this is an animal. Um, it acts like an animal and it looks like an animal. Uh, so it, I think it's an animal. Uh, a skinwalker is something that's mythical or something that's supernatural. I don't think these things are supernatural. Uh, I, I believe that they may have the ability to have uh, infrasound. You know, tigers have infrasound. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they can confuse their prey. Uh, it makes it easier to catch. There have been people saying that, you know, you know, they're out in the woods and they've been out in the woods all their life. And all of a sudden they have this fight or flight panic mode, you know, that hits them. And maybe Bigfoot is able to do that on a lower frequency, like elephants communicate uh, something like that. So, but I don't think it's a magical animal at all. Skinwalker is magical. Uh, you know, it's a witch doctor that can change forms and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, this is a natural animal, and I think we're going to find one one day. And it, we, Adrian, you can go look at it in the zoo. <laughs> safe, so. On the other side of the glass, yeah, that would be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are good <laughs> questions, though. Good you questions. just mentioned communication, too. Uh, you know, there are ways of communication. Do you think there a lot of people believe they can be communicated with? Do you think they can? Well, I communica communicate with my dog every day. You know, he knows what the word treat means. And uh, he's looking at me right now because I said it, uh, you know, he, he knows that. I don't think that they're going to sit down and have a conversation with us. I okay. think it, uh, animals don't typically do that. I know Coco, the gorilla can do sign language and, and get points right. across. Uh, and maybe these things would be smart enough to be able to do that as well. But um, vocally, there's screams and there's hoots. And there's howls and there's grunts and there's growls. Uh, so there's all these all these things, but they don't really they I think they communicate with each other. Dogs barking know what the other dog is yeah. is barking about, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't think that they're going to come up and, you know, want to have a cup of tea with you and and talk Sorry. over what was on TV last night. So. Yeah, and say, hi, yeah. Bob. How you doing? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, could you could you open your curtains a little bit more? We can't uh -huh. see very well. <laughs> you, you, uh, football games are. Come on. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. <laughs> no, I know that uh, uh, on your presentation that you'll, you'll have the call and responses you do. And uh, and I always joke because yeah. uh, me me one of these people I, I don't I, I just worry about things out there that'll eat me so but I, I always wonder <laughs> yeah it's you Bigfoot team hunter out here on this hill and then there's other Bigfoot hunter team over here and you go woo you know and they're good and then and the other Bigfoot hunter team is like that's a Bigfoot yeah. woo! well how do you know it's not that for years I've done a last watch <laughs> cartoon you know it's a yeah. one panel cartoon about about Bigfoot and, and researchers, and I have one that does exactly that. <laughs> uh, you know, but uh, where we research, uh, we we don't really tell people where the locations are. We have nicknames for locations, uh -huh. and uh, so if we if I tell my friends we're going to go to the Mountain Dew Pond, yeah. uh, we know where that is. Nobody else does, and. Uh, there may be at times where somebody may make a call and another person makes another call, uh, but we're in such remote areas uh, that it's very, very unlikely. Yeah. And uh, I've had, I've made calls and had uh, something make a call back and then I make another call and it calls back and I make another call and it calls back and it lasted five minutes and it seemed to be getting louder or closer. Uh, and I, then I started thinking, well, maybe this this is a, a male looking for a girlfriend, and I better <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Uh, you don't know that the woo sound that he's saying is like, hey, yeah. baby. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How you doing? My, my sister used to live close to Falk, Arkansas. Um, and uh, she wanted to go squatching one night. And we, uh, we so we drove <laughs> out, and it was about 11 o'clock. And I drove out to the bottomlands there at Mercer Bayou. And <laughs> she was all excited. And I rolled my window down, and I just did a woo. You know, really loud whoop, and immediately, immediately, something from the tree line called back. Oh and no! <laughs> I, I, I turned to I turned to my sister and said, "Tracy, did you hear?" And she was rolling her window up. She was ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, on but, that, uh, go ahead. No, go, you go ahead. I was going to say, on that note, do you have a plan in place if one would approach you? You know, closely. Have another last watch cartoon of two guys sitting in a truck and they're surrounded by a hundred Bigfoot and one of them is saying to the other one, okay, we called them, now what? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh. we, you can't go commando uh, in, in camouflage and like a Rambo and run through the woods and try to catch one of these things. You're in its backyard and there's no way in the world if it doesn't want to be seen that you're going to be able to run it down and see it, you know? So what we do is our squatching is like a glorified camp out. We have a fire and we cook up some good smelling stuff like bacon and uh, stuff like that in the air. And then we laugh and we joke and, and all along we're, we're looking over the person's shoulder that we're facing, looking at the tree line. And uh, what we're trying to do is is make it so interesting for this creature that it's going to come closer and come and come closer. And that's the goal is to get close enough to get evidence. And right. um, calling will do that. Uh, wood knocks. I've I've done wood knocks is striking a tree and have a have a reply. And uh, there's a lot of theories about wood knocks too. Sometimes or most of the time, it seems like they come in rhythms of three, and we don't know what that means, or, or, or just one. A lot of times when you pull up in the woods, and as soon as you get out of the car, you'll hear one solitary wood knock. And mm -hmm. maybe it's telling everybody, hey, there's a human in the woods. You yeah. know, be yeah. careful. You know, that makes sense. Like that. It does so, make sense. But they do they do come closer to you when, when you... Uh, make yourself available you know isn't that what you do ghost hunting too yeah. you know you try to make yourself available and and, and get their attention yeah. and that's that's what we're doing we were up at uh at mount uh, tadpole pond one time on top of this mountain and uh, we were making calls and and nothing was responding but uh about 10 minutes after we made a call there were six deer just burst out of the tree line and ran straight towards us and we had a little fire and we were sitting close to it and these six deer jumped over our fire in between us sitting uh in the chairs wow. scared us wow. to death <laughs> we didn't Bad. know what it was but they would rather take a chance with the fire and with humans than whatever was in the woods chasing i think yeah, wow. to me in. to me Ooh. i take that as a sign to leave ah. <laughs> what but, kind of uh, well I'm I wouldn't run out in the woods like that, like I said. But, uh, uh, well, so yeah, have you know, have you ever like thought about the, another one? You know, I, we know a lot of. Uh, I mean, I know a lot of fabricators. Maybe we can make a uh, like a a a bigfoot cage, like they have shark cages. <laughs> there is one. Is there uh, a bigfoot cage in Washington? They got my millions of dollars. It was, <laughs> it was made in the early '70s out of like railroad ties. And uh, people have sat in it and tried to call something in, thinking they would be safe. But it was really made as a trap. Yeah. Uh, they they baited it, hoping that a Bigfoot would come in and get caught mm -hmm. in it. Uh, but it, it's still there. I mean, it'll probably be there 100 years out in the yeah. woods. Because yeah, that's well, how it's made. Like, you wow. walk along, carrying this cage around, and you set it down, make your calls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can still make millions. Uh, in, instead of like a shark can only bite it, this thing can carry the cage off. That's oh, wow. true. So.
That is true. And it could probably just reach in. To, yeah, probably bad. Then it, I can't run. It's hard to run. <laughs> no. it's hard, hard to run with a cage. If yeah. it watches you get in, maybe it knows how to open the door to get you out. Too. Oh, yeah. You're just, you're just poking holes all in my just, ideas. Here. Uh -huh. Very, very helpful. There you go. Uh -huh. uh, what kind of what kind of tools do you guys use during your research uh, campouts? I'll call them. There, there are some great tools out there, I, and uh, our the the thing that scares me the most in the woods is the dark because yeah. you can't see in the dark and you don't know what's in the dark. Uh, so night vision liberated me. Snake, I always said. Snake boots and night vision liberated me in the woods because I could <laughs> yeah. see and uh, I, I felt safe. Uh, thermal imaging is amazing. Uh, Would you think thermal is, imaging uh, go through their coat? Say again? Would you think that a thermal imager would go through their coat? I mean, their fur? Yes, yes. Uh, and and it'll, it'll also show if somebody's completely nude or they're wearing clothes. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, that... And you can you can also if you see something a lot of uh, thermal imaging devices now have a camera in there and so yeah. you can film what you're seeing and then then later on you can get a human walk to walk out there and at the same place and record them and just to see how much bigger this thing was than yeah. an average human mm -hmm. and so uh, that technology has really been a good thing. Uh, one oh, thing I, I think like the to, super ears would be helpful. Yeah, and I like to lay in my tent at night, and I'm I'm awake, and but I have my headphones on, and about twenty feet from my tent on a tripod, I have my parabolic microphone. Yeah, and uh, it it picks up everything. So I'm laying in the dark in my tent, listening to what's out there, and and I always connect with little recorders uh, onto the parabolic. And, and if I go out at night, I will probably put four different recorders out uh, around the camp. Because if you hear something and it's recorded on one, it's just validation if you find it on another. You know? See, that, so, I don't, yeah. that would be very comforting to me. I don't think. <laughs> Do you use yeah. game cams it, also? <laughs> game cams uh, is a kind of hit or miss thing. Uh, okay. There are some really high dollar ones that I think would work. But uh, I, some of us, and me included, think that these things can see infrared. Oh. And yeah, if that's, that's the case, these these cameras are shooting out this infrared, and right. it'd be like a, a flashlight in the woods, and it can avoid that. And I think Makes that's sense. why these game cameras aren't aren't picking up a lot of things. I think if you if you had game cameras. The only way that you would make them work is to put something in the woods that's more interesting than the camera. Yeah. Uh, you know, some kind of they I've always wanted to get a great big mirror and set out there, you know. And, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, do something like that. I love to watch those on YouTube where a bear <laughs> sees itself and it goes yeah. ballistic, you know, or, <laughs> or chimps or gorillas. And uh, But I would like to do that. Uh, think out of think outside the box. Uh, I, I always would like also to, when we have two or three tents there and a bunch of people, that uh, one, we do uh, things really fast, walking around to something, watching us, you know, doing things and laughing and, and joking. Uh, and then everybody gets in a car and drives away, except one person that's snuck into a tent and he's hiding in, in the tent. And uh -huh. so if they think that this camp is encampment is empty uh, they may come closer uh, i've also used uh recordings of people snoring and put it in my tent uh, because yeah. i think they they hear snoring and they think the human is asleep and it's safe and they can come closer or come even come into camp uh, because of the snoring and so uh, there's a lot of things that you can try to bring them closer in and uh, are they dangerous? Yeah, any wild animal is dangerous. Yeah, definitely. You know? uh, but I think I think if these things were man eaters all the time, I, I think there'd be a whole lot more people missing in the woods, and we would have found them by now if they were that big of a threat in the woods. 
90% yeah. or 95% of the time when somebody sees one of these things, it's already walking away from it, trying to get away. It doesn't want to have anything to do with us. Uh, and so if they think if, if, if it's an empty car or it thinks it's an empty car, it may approach it. Um, a, a house, there's a, a family in Colonia right now that I'm, I'm talking to and dealing with that when the husband is away and the wife is home by, by herself in the house, something is coming up and tapping on the window. Because So it's watching them. And when he leaves, maybe it's his testosterone and he sees it as a, a threat. And the female is not seen as a threat. And so it feels like it can come up and tap on the windows. And they found footprints and a big handprint on their, on their house and heard vocalizations. So, um, and that's right here where I live. Uh, that that's yeah we drove out uh uh out past bologna uh a little while ago and we we waved at you guys as we drove past uh, uh and i was like yeah it's out in the it's a, pretty much a, I thought that was you. Uh, it's like the it's, it's like the boonies <laughs> hey, hey we're getting close hey, to the end of this guys. and i want to i, I want to go i want to go uh uh back to circle back to your your conference and and it uh okay. uh Tell us a little bit about that conference, how long it's been going on. What well, you I, I started putting it on. Uh, of course, we did not have it during COVID. And uh, there was one year that I, we didn't have it because my health was bad. Yeah. Uh, and I just, I just couldn't I just couldn't do it. But we've had six of these. And uh, I, I pull I, I pull people from our region of the United States. Uh, I, I'm not going to spend a lot of money to bring somebody from California to come in and talk about Bigfoot in California because it has nothing nobody to nobody do cares about California and Bigfoot. It, anymore. it has nothing to do with what's happening in Arkansas. So uh, I've got people coming from Oklahoma and from Texas and Arkansas and Missouri. You know this this area, and I always try to pick somebody that I have already been in the woods with. Yeah. And I know them. I know them to be honest. I know them to be good researchers and truthful. And uh, so I, that's who I, I choose from for my my uh, my speakers. And so and, and putting it on, it, it's a little selfish, but I get to tell them the topics. And so it's things <laughs> that I want to hear. <laughs> uh, and so uh, so one one of the topics this year is going to be uh, uh, AI art. On if you look, there's all kinds of Bigfoot things out there that look. Some of it looks extremely real, and uh, mm -hmm. how can you tell AI from the real thing? Yeah, that's you know, great. That's that, a that's a great topic. Yeah. So uh, the things that I want to hear about, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, there's going to be somebody there that's researched down at Boggy Creek. You know, of my my database, I, I have 140. Uh, eyewitness accounts from Miller County for Falcons, uh, mm -hmm. you know, 140. Uh, um, and uh, it's started from uh, 1834 to well, last week, you know, so wow. um, lots of uh, lots of sightings down there. So I, I have somebody speak about that. I have uh, another group. I'll, I always like to open it up, not just to my group, and be selfish, but I open it up to other research groups out there because I want to find out how what they're doing that I'm not doing. Oh and yeah, what works, you know, what's working for them. So, so it, uh, it, 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 it's 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 in October Enola. Fourteenth. It's in Enola, Arkansas, at the uh, elementary school gymnasium, and uh, it's uh, uh, it's twelve dollars to get in, and uh, we have a conference shirt. Uh, that I always draw something, uh, a conference shirt each year, and uh, I always make it has something to do with, with Arkansas, you know, Bigfoot in Arkansas on the shirt. So, uh, cool. We have that going on, and uh, uh, Enola is a little bitty place that's a loan spelled backwards, and that's uh. about what it is. But there's been several sightings in that area, and uh, and the gym was available, and so we're going to have it there. Excellent. Year. As a twelve dollars at the door uh, for adults uh, for October ten years 14th, and Saturday, under. October fourteenth. It's for ten years old and under. It's six dollars according to your right. thing here. Right. They're gonna have uh, it is, it, it is family there. friendly. I I make sure that the speakers and the people that are there, the vendors, know that this is a family event 
there will be kids there. Uh, and so mind your language and you mean, yeah. things like that. I try to do that. Anyway, I try. But if I saw a Bigfoot, I don't think I could mind my language very well. <laughs> just just saying. No, uh, we've been, oh. every time that you've had it, we've tried to get out there. Uh, I've got that weekend off. I don't, so I'm going to try to make it out there this year. Cool. And if I don't get out there, I'll definitely see you at the end of October at exactly. the Arkansas two weeks, Paranormal Two Expo. weeks later, we'll be in, at McCarkin Park in Little Rock for the Paracon. And for several years now, I've been the Bigfoot guy. Uh, yeah, there, and, and I think Ken Gerhard will be there again. He may yep. talk about Bigfoot, but uh, um, I I always have some kind of presentation about Arkansas and Bigfoot, and, and I open myself up to question and answer too, because I I want people to be uh, not afraid of these animals. Uh, I give them a healthy respect and uh, a wide distance, but uh, they're not a monster coming out to get you and eat you. You know, they're a wild animal. And if you have experience with them or see them, consider yourself fortunate because they're extremely rare and uh, not many people see them. So. Well, I get scared of cows. So <laughs> I don't want to see a big one. Anyhow. Uh, how, no. else, how else can people get a hold of you? Uh, they can uh, contact me through uh, uh, the Facebook page. Uh, I'm on Facebook. Uh, uh, the Arkansas Bigfoot Conference has a Facebook page. Uh, they can contact me that way. Apes, Arkansas Primate Evidence Society, the little group that I started, uh, has a face Facebook page. So they can they can contact me that way. Uh, they can uh, call me, uh, 501-733-5485. It's my cell phone, and I'll be happy to talk with them. Uh, and... Uh, Swain Studio at hotmail.com is my email address if they if they want that. Uh, what was that last one? Swa uh, uh Swain S W A I N Studio, uh -huh. one word, all lowercase. I'm an artist, so I had to put a studio in there. Uh, <laughs> at, at hotmail.com. Oh, hotmail. Okay. Yeah, that's the one I check every day. Wonderful. Right. Well, Brian well, said I... cows are scared of you too, Adrian. <laughs> 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 well, I I would be happy to come back on the show sometime. And, uh, I'd be happy to have you. Since, no, I, I agree. since I know what to expect, I could probably pull out some of my casts and the button oh, yeah. and things like that and, and cool. uh, have some of my vocalizations ready uh, well, to go we, as well. And, yeah, it would be uh, fantastic to do that. And we're, we will have a booth set up at the expo, so we might have you sit in the chair and talk with you a little bit there too. Okay, super. Hey, super. Face to face. All right. <laughs> awesome. Just wear pants. <laughs> so, then, then I'll definitely be wearing pants. <laughs> Stick around, Robert. Stick around, Robert. Um, coming up this weekend, we have Silicon. Uh, I know it's not in the Amok territory. Sorry, Adrian. It is in Illinois, but foreign, we are representing. We are representing Amok. <laughs> Ken and I is going to be there. I'm going to be there with my um, uh, paranormal group, uh, Debbie. So that's this weekend in Effingham, Illinois. So if you guys are out there, please stop by and visit. Say hey. Get a hey. photo. Yeah. Something. Say hi. <laughs> Saint, um, Saint Louis is only two hours away. So I hope to see uh, you guys. Uh, awesome. <laughs> and who you got coming up next week? Oh, my gosh. I have... Um, Somebody. I have Angela Fink. Somebody. <laughs> Somebody. Sorry, Angela. They're they're picking on me already. Uh, Angela, <laughs> Angela Fink from the Soul Society. And Danielle, I think it's pronounced uh, Felsnick. And she is from, if I can read it correctly, Destrino Fortuna. They are a couple of uh, psychic mediums who mm -hmm. deal with... Uh, all different kinds of people and situations. I'll just put it that way. Cool. Nice. So I, I believe they're both from uh, Wisconsin. Awesome. Sweet. So good. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm really good friends with Angela, and uh, we've been investigating off and on various places. Few places, maybe one, maybe in Missouri, but uh, <laughs> several, several places we have actually investigated together. So, uh, She's a great person, and she's one of my mentors. So, awesome. Yeah. So join us all next week. Join yes. us all next week. Until now, 
Till then, bye. Bye, y'all. Bye. 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 Bye.